Rolandus Computers, how are you doing, my friend? Great. Thanks for having me. Uh, welcome. Well, listen, um, this whole week, we're kind of highlighting our podcast partners, uh, friends of the podcast. But really, what it is, is people within the swimming community doing great things for swimming. Um, and you're one of those people, man. And uh, you have this incredible product. You have a few products, but one of the products that I love is the is the drag socks. I mean, I've used these in so many different capacities in my training at Auburn with my professional athletes. Um, this has had such an impact on on my um, sprinting performance from my whole team. And I, I haven't told you that personally. And so here's my chance to thank you for your product. Um, that's just one of your brilliant products. And we, and I want to talk about more. Uh, but listen, um, you know, you're a former swimmer yourself. So tell me just in terms of your general swimming career, how did it begin for you? Yeah, I started as, you know, as average swimmer, age group swimmer. Uh, grew up in a, a Konas, Lithuania, um, all the way through the age of 18 or so. Tell me this real quick. What, where's Lithuania for those that may not know? <laughs> Uh, so it's considered to be Eastern Europe, but okay. uh, we can brag about the fact that if you look at a Europe and then pinpoint right in the middle of it, we have a geographical center of Europe. So it's it's north of Poland, between Latvia and Poland, next to the Baltic Sea and Belarus. Excellent. Okay, that gives me a much better idea. So continue. And uh, so I grew up. I loved something right from the beginning. Um, I was you know very competitive. You know, achieved great success as a age group summer as the junior, uh, I believe I won uh, European juniors uh, in 20, uh, 1999. Mm -hmm. And um, and then at that point, uh, I graduated from high school and I'm in Europe, as you know, it's kind of a, a little difficult to do both school and swimming. So I had to, I had to look for other opportunities. And one of the opportunities I had was, um, uh, it happened in 2001 at the World Championships in in, uh, in Fukuoka, where Dr. G. Gennady Sokolov introduced me to my bottom. Mm. Semi-jokingly, he is like, hey, you know, we should come swim for Cal. And a few months later, I show up at his doorstep. I say, hey, I'm here. And back then, I did not really know that Cal was a university. I thought it was nice. just a you know, swim team. And said, so, well, you cannot be on this team. You had to be a student first. to be." Mm. And that's kind of a my journey, journey began in the, here in the Bay Area where I swam in a, with an age group swim team here in Oakland while studying mm -hmm. English, getting my SAT scores up and TOEFL tests, you know, to get into university, basically, which wow. I did in about a year and a half. And that was pre-Skype, pre-FaceTime, pre-cell phones, basically. So I was really exposed to English day and night. So wow. it helped me really to, to excel in English language. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, so you're you're training with the club team. This this guy who's been to the Olympics and the World Championships, and you're a big man. How tall are you? I'm six ten, I believe. In 2008, six, I was a, I was a think I was considered to be the tallest Olympic swimmer back in 2008 Olympics um, in, in swimming history, Olympic swimming history. Wow, so. wow! And so you're in the Bay Area training with this age group team. This this. 610 Lithuanian who doesn't speak much English. It must have been intimidating, huh? It was. Yeah, it was uh it was very uh it was unique really because I was very uh you know being a already in 2000 I participated for Lithuanian Sydney Olympics. So I mm. kind of uh, had that reputation of hey, I'm Olympian. I'm going to come here, I'm going to train with the fastest swimmers and I kind of uh that quickly turned into okay, I'm going to go and join a swim team, a local swim team in Oakland and I'm going to swim with those kids for 1 hour a day five days a week and no weights, just the swimming and study English for eight hours a day. And that actually turned into be a great uh, success for me because, you know, growing up swimming twice a day for, you know, doing doubles Monday through Friday, singles for Saturday, taking the Sunday off, for example, I, I really thought that my swimming career is going to go backwards. I'm not going to improve because I did not, as I said, you know, I didn't lift any weights. I didn't do doubles. I didn't, uh, train as much as I used to. So I was a little nervous, but uh, interestingly, I actually uh, got better. I really learned about technique. I, I, I realized that swimming is not about how much you work, but how you work. And um, that really helped me to, to, uh, to come back to Europe and then swim best times at the uh, following, you know, European championships. Wow. So, Wow. Listen, I don't know much about basketball, but I know Lithuania has a great basketball team. There's no they doubt. So, 
Yeah, they used to for sure. So like, were you at some point thinking that? Were they trying to recruit you to come and play basketball? Um, at, at a very young age, I was very, um, first of all, I didn't really like personally contact, like individual mm -hmm. sport. And uh, second of all, I disliked the fact that basketball players are going to get injured at some point in their career. And I really disliked the hospitals. So I said, you know what? I like to go swim. I like to have my own space and prove my point. That I can go fast from point into point, you know, from one point to another point. Right. And that's why I never, never really thought about basketball. Even though, of course, everybody's looking at me. It's like, where do you play ball? You know, what's mm -hmm. those are the questions I face every day, even now? Like, mm -hmm. what's the story? Like, you know, what's your, you know, how tall are you? Every mm -hmm. single day. That's something that I have to, I have to learn to live with. You know, answering the questions and just kind of keeping that basketball subject at the end disappointing person that i never touched the ball in my life so <laughs> they really never understood how came up i you know i continued with swimming so yeah a, a friend of mine a friend of the podcast too uh trevor freeland he was just over at the formula one i believe in abu dhabi and he met he got to meet uh kabib uh namur 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 of i don't know how do you say yeah, his name yeah, yeah. Anyways, and Kabib asked him, he's like, oh, you play football, basketball? He's like, no, I swim. And Kabib, like, couldn't couldn't believe this big yep. big man swims. But, yeah, I mean, you're, you're one of those guys. It's uh, it's incredible. So then you you're you get your English better. You're in this high school team. And then finally you can join the Cal team. Was this around, what, 2002, 2003? You 2003. Remember? I remember uh, I, when I came for the – I came actually – I made a three trips here, you know, two months at a time, three months, uh, three months at a time. And on the third trip, I was here for six months. And I remember every time I, I would leave, before I would leave, I would take a test. Mm. And then, you know, and then while winning were for the results, I would try to figure out what, it, what, what is the next plan. And I remember uh, my coach, Mike Bottom at a time, he was saying, you know, hey, I'll give you a year. If you get it, you know, we'll get you on a team. And I remember second time I took it after one year, I was very, very close. And so, you know what, I'll give you one more chance, one more opportunity, six more months. You come back, do your thing, do your English thing, take a test. If you're in, you're in. And I did it. And I remember in 2003, Worlds, um, Barcelona, uh, the results came. He's like, you know, I, it was in the middle of the meet. You know, the, the news came and said, hey, what's your address? We're sh sh uh, shipping you in overnight FedEx papers to sign because you're starting oh, school in three oh, weeks or two weeks. Uh, just like, and I, I told this to Mike and he's like, what? No, no, this, this can't be true. He's like, yes, it is true. I can't believe it myself. And that was a turning point where it's like, all right, either leaving America forever or actually going and experiencing the whole college swimming experience, basically. Right, right. Did, did you get four years at Cal? I actually swam. I was eligible. So that's another story. I was, I was 21 when I was a freshman. and I, you know, I was too. Yeah, I, I was the same. Yeah. I, was, I swam. I, was, I had eligibility for two years. So I was oh, representing okay. Cal for two years and then graduated in three and a half because I had a really rush. Oh, okay, freshman. right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I started as a freshman in 97. Back then you could you could do the four years. It was mm -hmm. I think I might have been one of those guys that kind of pissed some people off and maybe had to change the rules a little bit. So And that's and that's why I think 24 is the the oldest you can be. So I was 23 yeah. in my, my second yep. year. So I was from freshman being 21 to senior jumped skipped to two years basically. Right, right. But the, you know, you have this experience. You you meet up with uh, Mike Bottom, you you you're being trained by one of the best sprint coaches in the world. Your events at the time, what were they? Yeah, 53 and 100 free. Those two events, and obviously for NCs, you had to do three events. So I did three. Uh, I had a 200 freestyle, um, which is not my favorite, obviously. I think I've done 130, 135, my best time uh, at, a, at a conference championships, Pac 10s. Back then, it was called Pac 10s. And then uh, mainly 53, 100 free. And so you and I were you and I were competitors on the world stage, man. Yeah, yeah. Interesting fact, actually, my my freshman year in two thousand four NCs, we're actually the short course meters in uh, Long Island, New York. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Fred Biscay actually tied for the final, and I lost the swim off, and then he broke the world record from lane one or lane eight. Lane eight, yeah. Lane eight, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, that was the interesting interesting memory I was just thinking a about. Bit of, a little bit of history there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we we traveled the world together. I mean, I was at the Barcelona World Championships. Um, you know, the couple of Olympics we we swam together at. So, um, I remember seeing you as an imposing figure. Like, who the <laughs> hell is this guy? Yeah, you know? myself and there, my friend, my friend that I grew up with. Uh, we also both same height. He's a little skinnier, but we're both two. You know, two meter over two meter athletes, basically walking yeah. around. It's really intimidating, and we we're kind of joking around. We're the shortest people in Lithuania, so. 
I remember thinking the only chance I got with this guy is if I just increase my stroke rate. He's not going to be able to handle my, my my tempo. So like for me, it was all I got to beat him with tempo. I'm not going to beat him with length, you know. So that was that was my thing back then. But um, so but you, what what did you learn from Mike Bottom at the time uh, or during your whole experience with him? Well, the whole the whole experience was different because you know growing up, you know, age group was very this kind of a one model that's all. You basically swim, you know, crazy amount of yardage. You lift every day. You basically, there's this one model that should fit everybody. And what I learned is that, you know, it's it's really, you know, you cannot apply that to everybody. You have to really personalize the program based on pretty much every swimmer. And uh, what I learned about swimming in general here is that um, swimming is really not the world. I grew up thinking that my world was swimming. And here I learned that swimming is just part of the life, part of the world. You know, you have to balance everything. You can't just uh, put your you know, head down. Okay, this is swimming. This is my life. I'm going to do that. And which I did for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, so I said, so wait a second, I can swim for one hour a day. I can, you know, work in technique and I still drop time. That was mm -hmm. the, the main thing. And that was the right. mostly main reason why I came here because I couldn't improve my time swimming in Europe. And I wanted to go to school and I want to, you know, have different experiences just kind of a see you know what it was but back then by then by the way i didn't really think that i could be a student because i i didn't speak any english i came here i couldn't even speak with my bottom i was i was having my host family person talking it's like a talking slow english mm. to normal english and translating you know so it was it was quite interesting you know how quickly i had to learn the language and and really be you know at that academic level to be to be you know in school basically Right. Impressive, man. It's incredible. We had a lot of foreign athletes that would come to Auburn and part of my job was to help teach them English. So we, we would watch a lot of movies together and talk yeah. about, talk, they would read the subtitles and we'd talk right. about different words. Like, what, what is that word? Yeah. Okay. okay. You know, uh, Roman Barnier was one of my roommates, uh, Lionel Moreau, a couple of French guys, um, Ozzy Cavedo, who's now uh, the associate head coach at, at Alabama, he couldn't speak English when, when we met, kind of thing. So, yeah, I taught a few people English over over the years. But, um, well, in terms of the the school itself, what did you end up studying? So, school was uh, interesting. Uh, you know, my goal was to get into school because I wanted to swim. That was my my goal, and the whole the whole goal was to get into school. And then once I got into school, I realized that I still have to be eligible and still have to go to class and take the exams and pass and just be eligible. I had to be uh, fully enrolled in classes. And that was another story because I couldn't, even though I passed those tests, I still had a hard time writing, reading and listening, you know, lectures, what people, you know, what professor had to say. So luckily at Cal, they have an amazing uh, support for, for athletes, for student athletes. So with the help, you know, we were able, I was able to kind of uh, uh, get through school and, First first semester, I was it was uh, I thought that I, I, I won't I honestly didn't think I'm gonna I was gonna graduate. I, mm. I thought that I was just, it's a temporary experience. I'm gonna swim until I fail. Basically, I'm gonna go back. So that was my thinking. But once I finished my eligibility, I realized that what's the next goal? And the next goal was to graduate. And my uh, degree, uh, it was basically I was just. Um, you know, picking random classes, taking different classes all over the place. And then when it was time to declare my major midway through my junior year, I said, you know, they said, you have to, you cannot go any further without declaring a major. You have to declare a major and, and, and finish. So we sat down and um, environmental science was my, uh, my major. That's something that uh, I took a bunch of different classes and we just put it together. I said, well, you know what, if you take a couple more requirements, you can graduate in, uh, in conservation and resource studies major. So okay. interesting. And I, wow. I had to pick a forestry camp uh, up in the Northern California. So I have a minor in forestry too. So that's kind mm. of my, my education, but uh, wow. sadly, I'm not really using it for my, uh, for my current life. It's just uh, having that check mark. You know, hey, you know, you have yeah. a, a high, you know, high bachelor's degree and you're yeah. somewhat smart because you went to Berkeley. So that's kind of a, uh, my thinking of a, of education because it was really mo more of a, self-education and that's what i miss it's kind of a learning different areas and kind of a analyzing and applying to your life so did anyone in your family have uh college degrees yeah my my both parents you know they're, they're they have they had a bachelor's degrees and uh um so 
Right. Okay. And, yeah. and you know, I'm looking back right now. It's pretty much it's in Lithuania. Actually, it's 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 very difficult to find somebody that doesn't have a bachelor's degree because, mm. uh, first of all, education is free or very inexpensive. So mm -hmm. if you don't go to high uh, to to university after high school, you're considered to be you know it's like what's wrong with you? You you know right. you need to get, get through the education. But as an athlete, student athlete, it's impossible to do that in Europe. That's why we have so many international athletes here in the states because right, the system right. allows to balance both. Right. Well, listen. You have these. Uh, you have uh, three Olympic experiences: two thousand, two thousand four, two thousand eight. Um, uh, somewhere I read the the, the business started around um, two thousand ten. So, what was the genesis of of the the business? How did it come about? Um, why did you decide to kind of go this direction? So it's really you know it really it happened as a as an accident almost. Like after two thousand eight Olympics, when I graduated from uh, from Cal, and then I started coaching age group swim team in Oakland, the same team that I swam uh, before Cal. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, I was looking for for purpose. You know, what's the next challenge? You know, I I, I got a gig as the masters coach in El Cerrito. Mm -hmm. That's where the company is actually formed, uh, based out of. And I'm still coaching, still coaching El Cerrito masters, and I'm coaching the swim team in Oakland. Oh, uh, wow. you know? And um, and then uh, so the, the business has really came around as a as a as an opportunity uh where swimmers it's kind of a it's kind of a almost like an accident you know swimmers uh swim big swim fans in in, in a local pool came to me and I said hey you know um we have this idea you know what do you think and then i tried that idea i tried to swim across the pool with drag socks back then we didn't call drag socks we, we didn't know the name back then but i swam across the pool and i said oh my god this is this is like uh something that could help helps you know swimming the sport of swimming because i know that resistant training is very important part of the training and um there are a lot of different tools but this tool specifically that blew my mind i just couldn't believe you know how effective it was and then we start brainstorming ideas like you know what is the what is this whole idea like what's the point you know what's what's the reason you know why we have this and then we realized that this is the something that um you know really can create a drag without compromising swimming technique so right. your body is in a, in, a, in a flat position. You're not dragging. You're not. Your body is in a flat. It's a very natural movement in the water. Either you kick or, or swim with them. And um, you know, we started. Uh, uh, interestingly, we started with uh, with a larger size first. That was our mm -hmm. first um, kind of a. It's like okay, this is the size. This is what we're going to. What you have is the smallest ones. Okay. That was the one that, based on a uh, coach's experience, we had to make them smaller. Right. Uh, so these are the 30s, and the 30 represents the length in centimeters. Um, and then the 45s are 15 centimeters longer, and then the 60s are a lot more, a lot, a lot taller. I mean, a lot longer. And um, and and that's so. That's how the idea started. We basically, myself with two other partners, we kind of a, uh, you know, sat down and said, okay, well, there's a potential. How about we have some connections in uh, in Thailand to manufacture the products. And I uh, said, well, let's let's try this. So we created this business, you know, very streamlined idea where we have no, um, you know, it's, it's very uh, straightforward. You know, we put a coach, uh, our customer as, a, as first. We, you know, the, we value the connection. We value the, the feedback. We, you know, we like value the connection. So we have a coach and a swimmer uh, come to us and, you know, we answer the questions. We're helping, you know, um, to answer the questions. And um um now i thought my thought uh, lost my thoughts um, well, let me ask you another question then based on this uh it's, it's one thing to have an idea and kind of uh, excitement around an idea but then it's a whole nother thing to have an actual business so what did you learn kind of in the setup phase of the business that you know maybe you didn't know that's a little bit more difficult and challenging um but something that you know obviously you need to achieve in order to have a successful business so it was a uh, it was a uh, none of us none of the, our partners have uh, had a business uh, experience so we really uh started from scratch basically you know what do you do you need you need, you need a manufacturer that produces the product mm -hmm. we need to ship it back here we need to store it we need to advertise it you know the the idea you know you know how do you come up with the drag socks why is it drag socks well you know, it's a catchy name. It's a, something that you know, you know, you can you know, you can stay, you know, it can stick very easily. You know, say socks, mm -hmm. and it's automatically, automatically, you think about the drag socks. Mm -hmm. um, 
and um, and it's 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 really um, you, you, you know there are a lot of bumps and 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 you know challenges you know, in the beginning you know when we had you know uh, request samples from manufacturers they would do something wrong you know out of spec and you know, and we really had to really tune it down you know to what we wanted so there was a lot of back and forth back and forth and then uh, you know once we had a product it's like well what's the next you know what do you do like we need to start talking to coaches so I took some drag socks and went up to Berkeley which is you know next town from El Cerrito and and I, I talked to Dave Durden and I said hey you know I have some product give it to your guys try to see what you like and then a week later he calls me and says, hey we'll love it we need it for everybody I want everybody has it so everyone to have it so uh, so that was kind of a first first experience and from that point is like you know we re really never really advertised and we uh, had a coaches kind of a communicate and share you know ideas among them so um, you know coach might heard you know about drag socks from five years ago and then they finally come and order you know for, for their for the, for their athletes mm -hmm. and it's the idea is really you know you might think oh what is this you know mesh bag you know it's like what is this whole idea and it's 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 crazy it's not gonna work and so we we basically started this program you know try before buy where coach pick you know can pick five pairs and try for two weeks and then if they like it they purchase them and if they don't like it they ship them back to us and the reason why we did it was because we're so confident with the product that um pretty much everyone kept it we had a very few that sent it back to us so oh, yeah no, I'm, not, I'm not sending mine back i'm keeping mine that's for sure <laughs> if, if you try them right away you can you, you see the benefits right away it's, yeah it's it's, it's, it's truly it's very straightforward. I'm just surprised that nobody had this idea before us. I mean, we... Well, I'll tell you what. This is what I used to do at Auburn. Uh, I, I had the freedom to do a lot of things. I had the freedom to kind of run the sprint program the way I wanted to run it. I also had a little bit of a budget. So what I would actually do is... Um, and, I, and I had the freedom to create. So I would actually think on the pool deck, like, what can I do to create fun? What can I do to create resistance? What can I do to create challenge? So I, I'd always have these ideas. I'd actually um, be allocated a little bit of money, maybe, you know, four or $500. And I'd have, you know, 10 or 12 athletes in my sprint group. So I'd actually go to Walmart and I would, I would look around Walmart of like, all right, what can I take that I can apply to the pool? And, you know, so I would, I would we'd put stockings on our arms. We would do all sorts, we'd do things with almost similar to kind of the drag sock idea, but then, you know, so we would do these things and, and create, but it wasn't until these came out, I was like, oh, this is brilliant. I mean, <laughs> I love this. So simple, so effective, um, you know, cost um, worthy, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't super expensive and, and it just made sense. And um, they dry so easily. I always had problems drying out things or, you know, so all these different issues, but then these came along, it was, it was brilliant. Uh, it solved a lot of problems for me. Um, I see now that you've also increased, you know, you've got drag sleeves, you've got sensory mitts. I was on your website earlier. What is it? Aquavolo.com. Is that right? Yeah. Aquavolo.com is our Aquavolo website. Com. Yeah. So then you've got these Volo blades, you've got this headliner thing, you've got this T-kick, you've got core link. I mean, you've got a, uh, a band, you've got a TNT wall. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to have to dig into that a bit, but you've got a bunch of products now like you've really started to develop and expand your line right it is uh, correct yes we we really you know drag sock was the original product we started it with it and then and along the way you know we swam pretty much on a daily basis and we tested different ways we received a lot of feedback from coaches uh, for example uh dave durden said that you know he uses drag socks on his arms i was like wait a second mm -hmm. that's crazy let's try and then we basically tried it and it's like, oh, wow, it feels amazing. Only if you're strong and big athlete, because if you're weaker swimmer, uh, the drag sucks because of the opening at the end, you know, they would fall off. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said, well, what do we just kind of create the, the closing, the part on the, at the, both ends? And that's how the drag sleeves came around, the idea behind it. So you can stay on the entire arm and, and they're adjustable based on the arm, how big the arm is. And, uh, and, and the way, you know, the people are using drag socks, you know, like Dave Saylor at the time, you know, he was coaching at the USC, you know, he was wearing, uh, he was putting the sleeves just below the knees for his breaststroke group. It's like, wait a second, like, this is crazy. Like, let's try. We, we, we even haven't tried those, you know, variations and options of ways to use drag socks. 
And therefore, you know, there are just you know, countless and limitless, you know, ways to use it, those uh, drag mm -hmm. stuff. But, but again, the, the whole idea of a business, we didn't want to create something that has been invent, invited, uh, in, invented, you know, the, mm -hmm. everybody got a regular paddles. So we had to create a different type of paddle. Um, you know, TNT uh, wall is specifically uh, for uh, specific pools. It's really to minimize younger swimmers grabbing the wall versus you know, mm -hmm. kind of co covering the gutter, basically. So you touch uh -oh. the wall and then touch and go versus grab the gutter and then go. Okay. Type of. So there's always a purpose of every product that we created to, to serve different purposes. Like a, like a headliner, for example, is that mm -hmm. it's everybody knows, you know, if you push the kickboard or not kickboard, the paddle, for example, uh, you know, we can work on that on your head position, but since mm -hmm. the paddle is not symmetric, you know, it's going to be, you know, dragged to one, one direction slightly. So we just said, okay, well, how about we just make it a symmetrical tool that you can use for, for, for working on your body position, on your head position, basically. Simple and effective, man. It's, it's, it's awesome. Now, are you guys shipping all over the world? People can buy on your website all over the yes. world? Yes, we ship worldwide and, um, uh, some products, you know, we ship from from European Union, but mostly, you know, it's it's from from coming from here, from from the United States. Wow, wow. Have you able Have you been able to hire any full time staff? Like, who, how many people work for the company now? So, since we have this streamlined business, basically, you know, it's everything is so efficient and cost efficient, and and you know, once we receive our order, we just kind of a process the same day. It's a three man operation. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of inventory. So, you know, as soon as we run low inventory, we order more. So it's like, it's always, you know, um, you know, always fresh inventory basically comes in. And we, 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 three of us, we, three of us, basically, we don't, hi we haven't hired anybody. We just kind of an operating business. Uh, we share different tasks of the business and then we just kind of, uh, um, just, just operate this way. So, you know, all the emails, all the phone calls, it's, it's, it's us basically, mostly me talking to coaches answering questions basically beautiful man i love that now what about in terms of patents have you gone and got some of those yeah so that was the first the drag shocks definitely you know was the uh patented you know product right away so what does that um, mean when it when it when the drag socks are patented what does it mean so uh so in the very beginning in the very beginning you when you develop product you cannot show it to public if you want to Basically, you need to file per, for, for a provisional patent first. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, you can take it and test it to the public. So if you have a product that you, you have, you cannot just go around and show and talk to everybody because that's, you know, there's like a time, a very time sensitive uh, uh, right. steps basically you had to follow. Right. And what it is is basically you have a product, you, you, you file the patent, you know, you, you, you get it approved and you have it. So basically it's the, it's the, it's the patent for the, for the product. Does the, does the patent stop other competitors copying your product? Is that what that Correct. does? Correct. That's 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 what it is. You know, it's any any innovation that you have. You know, you you have that a period of time that you, you you're the only one who had the right to to sell the product. Is there um, within the patent system? Is there is you know is it kind of touch and go? Like they're going to approve this, they're not going to approve this. Is there a period of time where you are not sure? Um, so yes, it's, it's a, you know, we, you have to have attorney for that one and I'm not okay. attorney. I, I don't know the patent law and it's, it's, it's pretty complicated. Um, yeah. we have to, you know, there's a, a lot of revisions. Um, there might be a product out there somewhere that is similar. So we have to make corrections and adjustments before right. it's fully approved. Um, so, and once you have the final approval, you have, you have a, for, for, for X amount of years, I just can't tell you right now for how many years you have that. Right. We can safely state that this is your product and nobody else can make it. Okay. Uh, how many pa patents do you have now under the Aquavolo branch? Oh, um, how many patents? I don't know. I need to, I need, that's a good question. I can't uh, tell you right now. I only ask good questions. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is, a, this is a tough one. Actually, I, I didn't really think about it. I, 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 I know. Yeah, I can't tell you this one right now from the top of my head. You got a few though, so that's good. Yeah. Um, so what's next for the business then? Where 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 do you want it to go? Yeah, well, we're continuing. We're continuing the you know serve and help you know sp sport of swimming, help swimmers, yeah. help coaches, you know answer questions. That's the first thing you know. And obviously, you know, as an innovative company, we're always looking for ways to come up with ideas and you know look for a new product. But mainly right now is to. 
know, what's happening in the world right now, you know, with the supply chain, you know, problems, you know, we're, our priority right now is to have enough, enough drag socks on hand to, yeah. to, to, to really, uh, to, to make it available for coaches. Yeah. And that's yeah. our future. That's our current Good situation. Stuff. Well, like I said, man, it's a game changer for me in, in the sprint world. I loved it. We, uh, I don't know if the athletes loved it sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's painful. They, they work, you know, they're no joke. You know, um, I, I'm actually a little, I was a little hesitant to come on your show because now everybody sees my face. Now everybody swims, you know, with the socks, they're going to hate me for, for someone for to blame me. Yeah. yeah. But coaches love me. So that's, 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 I guess that's balance, you know, coaches yeah, love us. Sure. Summers hate us. So. I think, I think they'll look back and appreciate the value you've added to their life. But, um, uh, well, listen, man, aquavolo.com, get on there, check it out, get some stuff for Christmas. This is going to come out before Christmas. Get on there and order them up. I'm telling you, these are game changers, and they're shipping all over the world. Love it. Um, great supporter of the podcast, but beyond that, just a great supporter of swimming. So uh, love what you're doing, man. Keep it up, and congratulations on the business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brad. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. Every year, people ask me what they should get their swimmer for Christmas, and I always tell them the same thing. Get a pair of drag socks made by Aquavolo. It's the perfect stocking stuffer for any swimmer. Honestly, there's no simpler training tool to build power in the water than a pair of drag socks. Go to aquavolo.com and use the code BRETT, B-R-E-T-T, -T, at checkout and save 10%.